So the Chrome Developer Tools can be quite handy, especially when you want to debug your website. So in this video, I'm going to give you a couple of tips to help you use it. Now, the first thing, if you've never used it before, you can right click and select inspect to bring up this little menu right here. And the first thing that I want to go over is the elements tab. So what this elements tab does is it shows us the elements or the HTML tags on the page. So here's my very simple website that I have displayed here that I'm developing and we can see it and we can just look through the HTML here. And the first thing that you'll notice is when you're using it, it'll highlight the node that you're on. So here you can see the body can expand the root and I'm just using my arrow keys to expand this and we can hover over different elements. So the cool thing about this is we can actually just go in and modify the HTML itself. So for example, this is called account. I can just click into this and I can call this Bob instead, um, right? And just fool the developer. This is one of those things where when they tell you not to trust the client, this is one of the reasons why, because you can actually just go into any website and change the values and whatnot. Um, anyway, the other thing that you can do is you can copy, if you right click on elements, you can copy their values. Um, the one that I also like to do is to cut the element um, in, or delete the element. This can be sometimes handy. Um, and to do that, I'll use the delete or backspace button on my uh, computer. So if you highlight a node, for example, the anchor, and I don't want it to be here on the page anymore, I just hit backspace. So that can be sometimes handy when you just want to simplify what's being displayed um, and to see where styling problems are happening maybe you can delete some nodes. So that's something I do once in a while. The other thing is on the right side, you can see all the style attributes for the node that you're looking at. So I can see this little bar right here has these properties and I can also go in and add more properties. So the background color right here or modify them. So here I can make the background color pink. Um, I can toggle it on and off. Uh, and then we can also go to say the computed properties and we can see the size of things. And if I hover over, each one of these, you can see it'll tell me the value of it and highlight it in the in the screen there. So I can see it's 1264 by 50. You can also see, for example, some of the computed values. This is the actual values of it. So for example, this is handy with fonts. Um, this is another thing I don't think I mentioned yet. You can click this here. And what it allows you to do is to hover on the page and you'll notice it moves down here. If I click, it'll automatically select it here for you. So now I can see for this button, I can see the font that is actually being displayed. So the font family is system UI. You may have five different fonts being applied and want to know which one is actually there. You can also click on this little button here and it'll tell, take you to why that font is being applied. Um, so that can be pretty handy for styling. So a lot of this is mostly when I'm working with CSS stuff, I'll be dealing with the HTML here, looking at those values and styling it. Um, the other thing to note is by default, if I say refresh the page, all the changes that I made to the HTML, CSS, and the elements tab goes away. All right, so the next tab that I want to talk about is the console. First thing is um, I love clearing stuff, so it's good to know about this clear function that you can run, and it just clears it. Other thing, you can hit up arrow, and it will remember your stuff. Um, it also has evaluation, and it also evaluates... Um, as you type. So I haven't even hit enter yet and it already evaluates it. So that is pretty handy. I really like that and it has auto completion, which is cool. Now the other thing that I sometimes do here is you can actually interact with the code on the screen or the HTML on the screen. So for example, I have access to the document and you can see as I type it here, it also kind of selects it here. So that's pretty handy. And I can say query and again, we get auto completion query selector. And for example, I can get the div here. And then I can say, and again, this is just going to return a div on the screen. You can see it returned the root div. And we can do all kinds of CSS selectors here to select different items. And then I can, uh, for example, get the text. In this case, the inner text is going to be the most useful. So we can see Stripe example account and click me. And uh, it's also good to note if we change stuff in the JavaScript here, it's going to change it on the web page too. So for example, uh, another shortcut to the query selector here is we can just do a dollar sign. 
So I've already done this before, <laughs> as you can tell. So here I'm selecting the title. So we can select it first. So the title is currently React App. We can see that up here. And I can say React App dot text. And I can set it to, for example, Bob or some other value, you know, and then it'll change it up here. Uh, so we can actually interact with the page, touch values, click values, um, and it'll actually affect the page. And so you can actually get data this way if you want to on the page programmatically um, and affect the page, which is pretty nifty. The next thing I want to go over is one thing that I use quite a bit, but it can be kind of overwhelming when you look at it at first, and it's this network tab. So this may be empty when you first come to it, but if you click this little thing right here, it'll start recording network activity. So this is all the requests that are going on with your website. So if you click that and then you refresh the page, it's going to record all the things that are happening. So here are all the requests that my website is making. You can also see how much time it takes for the requests to fire. You can see how big like the response body is. It's going to be helpful with, say, images. You want to see how big they are coming in. Now you'll notice this has this like command line frame. This is because I have some Chrome extensions on, I think, that are being loaded as two, so you can see that as well. But here we can see um, requests, for example, that we're making to the API. So this is where I like to use probably the most. Uh, we can filter it. So for example, all mine are called GraphQL. Um, and I can click on it and I can see the request that's being fired off. So the first tab here is we will see the headers. This can be very helpful when seeing, say, API keys and whatnot, making sure they're in the, uh, usually in the request header, you want to be sending those in. Uh, and maybe you can see the response headers. You're expecting maybe something back there. You can check that. Also at the very bottom, you can see the request payload to make sure this looks correct. So this is what you're actually sending to the server. You can also click view source if you want to see the raw. Um, and then you can also, so this is what we're actually sending to the server and the headers that we're sending to the server. You can see what the server responds back with. We can also go over to preview and see the data that it's sending back. Um, so this is going to be very helpful for debugging when you're like, uh, why didn't I get the right response or what response did I actually get from a request? This happens when I'm usually using Apollo. Sometimes they don't give you the best error messages. For example, here's a mutation that I clicked. It says server response was missing for query null. Um, I'm not really sure what that means. Sometimes if you go over to the network uh, tab over here and look at the request, you can get some better information. So if we come over here, we can see a request. I can see here's my mutation. I can see I did an empty email, empty password. And if I look at the response, I can see it tells me the username is required. Or I'll show you some other error. So this will give you the uh, direct error that is actually coming back from the server as opposed to maybe your your library or your JavaScript code is reporting in the console. Um, so this is a lot of times what I'll look for. The other handy thing that you can do with this is you can right click on requests and you can copy them. So for example, I may want to isolate this request, not run it in my JavaScript, but be able to, for example, uh, run it as a curl command. So I can just run this request on the command line here um, and I can see the response that I get back. So we can see the response directly here. The other handy thing that I like to do is copy as fetch. Um, and then I come out over here to the console and I can run the fetch here. And then I can say dot then. And then we can say x is equal to x dot json dot then. And I guess we'll call it y and we'll console.log y. Anyway, so this, this lets you see the body of the fetch and again you can interact with stuff if you want to here you can make an update on the page and here I'm just logging the uh, error message that we get there um, so anyway you can do that so this network tab is very handy for viewing the requests seeing what you get back and then being able to debug some of your core requests um, so this filter tab also I'm not sure if that shows up for everyone it's this little tab right here um, to see that to be able to grab that the other thing to note is these are pretty handy up here as well. Uh, the one that I like to use now and then is this throttle. So I can put on, for example, uh, slow 3G. And uh, if we just refresh the page, we'll notice like requests just take a lot longer to finish because it's simulating that. Um, so we can see this local host request and stuff is still pending and going uh, on. So you can simulate someone with a really slow network access 
this way, um, which is pretty neat. You can also see what happens when it's uh, offline. We can see not 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 good, um, but if you're doing like a PWA, you could see that there. So that's very handy. Also, you notice every time I refresh, um, it reloads this. You can preserve the log by checking that, and that means it's going to preserve the old requests that are in here. Um, so that can be very handy. So these are all very helpful as well. Um, and again. I just kind of went over the requests that are going to the server. That's the thing that I mostly use it for. Um, but you can see requests that are coming, for example, uh, the JavaScript that's coming back. And sometimes it can't load the response. Um, you'll notice also there's a cookies tab so we can see any cookies that are coming and going. Um, so here in the request, I'm sending a connect cookie. And speaking of cookies, if we go to the application tab, um, this is something where you can see all the cookies stored on your computer uh, and where they're coming from. So if I look at this, I can click over here and I can see I have a cookie set. I can also go over to local storage. I don't know if I have any. Yep, looks like I do have some local storage uh, on this. So you can see what local storage is being stored here. So pretty neat. Uh, and then again, we can change any of these values if we wanted to. Uh, we're not really using anything on local storage here, so that won't do anything. But say you want to log yourself out, so you can actually clear your cookies or your local storage by clicking on that uh, and refresh, and you'll be logged out. So for example, I was logged in there, but I just got rid of it. So this is where you can see that and interact with those cookie values. This can be handy for seeing if a cookie got set um, and what the values and whatnot are. It's also good to note you can do all these things also on your own website, uh, but you also can do this on any website you want. And uh, so for example, I can go to nike.com and I can do all the things that we just did. So we can come and we can inspect things. I can delete things. Uh, I can change the color of backgrounds. Um, you know, all this prankster stuff, right? And we can make it pink again. And the last tab that I really wanted to show is something that works best on a production site rather than, say, using this for debugging on localhost. And this is called, uh, if you go to the triple dots over here, more tools, it's the coverage button. So this one has, I found to be pretty handy. So you start recording, and I guess we'll just refresh this. Um, and what this will show you is how much unused JavaScript there is. And you can scroll around and do stuff and it'll update uh, here. So you can see on this page, it looks like the average is 46% 40 of the JavaScript loaded is unused. The uh, reason why this is helpful to know is you can actually click in and see like the code that is being unused and see the lines of code. Now, uh, this may be minified, but if you say have source maps on, you'd be able to do this on your own website and see what the code is. And the reason why this is helpful is when you see the code that is unused, you can introduce code splitting um, to your application. So you lazy load that and you're not loading all this JavaScript. So that was something that I did on my own site. And speaking of just, this is kind of something you can do to audit your site. The other good thing to know about if you don't know about is this audit button over here. Um, and if you don't see that, I believe you can just introduce it under more tools. And so what audit does is this is something that you can run. So we can run this on nike.com and all this is going to do is it's going to run some tests and there's a few settings that you can do and at the end it's going to produce what's called a lighthouse score uh, and it gives you some things that you can improve on your site um, and some suggestions and where you're doing well. Um, let's see, that was actually not too slow. It looks like it's almost done. And I don't know if it's just like loading. Oh yeah, so it looks like it's on a phone right here. Oh, that's the last thing actually I should show real quick. I actually use this quite a bit. Well, that's running. So there's this little phone icon here I forgot to mention. It's kind of related to elements. So if I want to test what this looks like on a phone, if you click this device, you can actually see at different breakpoints what your application looks like. You can also squeeze stuff. Um, and here it has some standard sizes. So we can see this is a small phone, medium phone, large phone, tablet, laptop right there. Um, so that can be very handy just to be able to compare what your site looks like at different screen sizes. So I use this for basically testing a site uh, responsibly. And uh, here's what the scores look like at the end. And we can see what this looks like 
um, and it gives us metrics and things to improve our site. So this is very handy. I really recommend running this just uh, whenever you pretty much put your site in production, uh, run this audit and see what things Google suggests. Now, not all of them may make sense, but you know, uh, it can catch some good things. Anyway, those are my tips for using the dev tools that will help you when debugging and just uh, basically being a better web developer.